We are back with our gigantic Kabudachi Twombly's Red Sentinel. And it's probably coming off camera here, but the apex has just absolutely exploded on this tree. It has performed above and beyond anything I could have expected. It has just absolutely exploded with growth from every one of our major trunks of this Kabudachi bonsai, as well as I imagine in the soil, the roots are probably growing extremely well. So we need to manage the growth of this tree, get it into balance, identify those apexes that were continuing to extend to heal wounds, setting them up for a nice long summer period where they can soak up the energy and build strength to continue development of this bonsai as we transition it in this developmental phase, eventually getting it to a bonsai form. As you can see here for scale, we've got my Sumo Kiyohime, and it looks just absolutely tiny next to this Kabudachi Red Sentinel. It is extremely warm today. I don't even know how warm it is. Mid-70s, it feels like. It's absolutely hot. It feels like summertime here, and I'm just excited to be here in the garden to work on uh, this amazing Kabudachi Red Sentinel pre-bonsai. Guys, I think I almost blew my back out lifting this tree up onto this bench. So for now, I think I'm just going to leave it right here where it's at. Let me get this Kiyohime out of the way so that I can get in close and start working on the tree. Maybe we get a little bit closer here so you can see what I've got going on. We are just overgrown in this area and it's really difficult to see what we've got going on. Okay, so if you remember when we were talking about how many trunks this tree has, we decided that two of the trunks might just be branches. What I'm looking at over here on this left hand side is that very lowest left branch or apex. Um, and so it has grown really well. And what we need to do is we need to get in here and figure out what is going on with all this growth. Okay, if you guys can see here, I'm controlling all of these branches right here. These all come from a smaller branch a little bit further back. And it's kind of starting to congest and come and tuck in the same area as this. We're gonna need to wire this branch over into a more open space over here. So I'm just gonna scooch those out of the way for now. This branch right here, this long elongation, that is the second strongest branch on the end of this trunk line. And so we do want to give it a little bit of strength, but it actually has some pretty decent taper. I'm going to pull you guys around so you can see what we're looking at. I think you all can see it now. Can we see that separation now? This right here, down in here, this is our trunk line down in here. This growth here, this is all coming from one branch. It's got some pretty good ramification on it, but we'll deal with that in a minute. All right, so here we have that branch and let's take a look at what we're working with. This lower part is really quite delicate and nice. So we're just gonna do some basic pruning here. I'm just gonna bring that back by one node. Let's get that trimmed back. This lower part of the branch extended a little more strongly. Let's trim that back just a little bit. You leave two nodes of growth on this one. If you look here, you can see we had this little nub right here. So that's not a huge step down in caliper. That was only a strong one year growth right there that we pruned back. We do wanna heal through that and we don't wanna overly tax it. Let's prune that back to two nodes as well. So we're gonna bring this entire piece off here. All of this growth right here is from the upper branch, but we wanna focus our attention down here. So we need to get this out of the way. I'm gonna get a piece of this silicone wrapped aluminum I'm gonna wrap that around this branch down here, feed that up through, and then I'm just going to attach it to another branch higher in the tree. So now we've got this area opened. We can see what we're working with here. Let's make sure you have a good angle on that. This right here was a pretty significant chop. So that's got a little bit more healing to do. Let's peel that back and see how it looks. And it is already starting to callus, that's great. Now remember, this was a fairly decent chop here. So even though I may prune this back quite a bit in the future, I do wanna leave three nodes on that and allow it to have a little bit more strength. This branch here coming from the top is a weaker branch. It already has one split in it. That looks really nice. I'm gonna leave two nodes there. This one here is the stronger of the two, one, two. I'm also gonna cut that back to two nodes. Clear that up a little bit, give us a little bit of space. Moving out here, we did keep three nodes there. This top one, I'm only gonna keep two. I'm gonna reduce that back. You can see we've already started to pull this in, trim this back. I don't want it to overwhelm 
can take all the energy from these other branches. There's a few smaller branches growing in here of moderate strength. They're not really overwhelming this design. So let's start pruning these back here. All right. Let's prune that back as well. Rotate the tree again. So y'all can see this next area. This is the left-hand side of that lowest branch in the back there. Here is the bottom part of that branch. We do need to control that growth. I'm gonna trim that back a few nodes. That's extending beyond the silhouette. So let's push that back. We're gonna leave these ones be. We don't wanna slow them down at all. I am going to remove that altogether. Let's encourage this branch to grow back toward the silhouette. This branch here, I'm gonna leave three nodes on that. It's still fairly low in the design and it's fairly shaded. There we go, I've got my hand in between the two sections of branch. Everything back here is coming from one of the other major trunks slash branches of this tree. So we don't really want to overly weaken this, but we do need to check these. And we'll come back to this and potentially manage this a little bit more after we've handled this branch up here. All right, so now we've got this upper branch in view. Let's get down in here and see what we're working with, okay? And that we are trying to heal. I don't think we have to worry too much about it. This upper section of branching, this one here, we can cut back fairly severely. I'm gonna bring this back to one node on each extension. Allow a little bit of light to get down to those lower branches. This one does not have any major wounds to heal. Bring back to one node. Let's leave two there. You see how this is forming this silhouette here? I don't want to leave this in the shadows, so I left one pair of leaves here, so two nodes on that lower branch so that is out to that silhouette that we're forming on this pad. This is strong. I'm going to prune that back. One node of extension. Okay, so we've managed that. We've got a nice silhouette going here. You can see we've already exposed some of these greener leaves here. And that's a sure sign that these were grown completely in the shade. Uh, we do need to protect these from the hot afternoon sun. So I've, I'm glad I've got this tree in a fairly protected spot. Let's continue rotating around. I want you to see with me as we go around this tree. So I'm going to spin a little more. Make sure that you all are in view. All of this growth right here in my hand, this is coming off of that large cut we made during the early spring as we got this into shape. So this branch, I do want to leave a little bit on the strong side. I've also got some silicone wrapped aluminum wire on that. I'm going to grab the phone and bring you in close so you can take a look at the entire system here. All right, so this is that branch we were just talking about. And let's get down in here and see if we can take a look behind the curtain and see what's really going on in here. Wow, this is difficult. Okay, all right, we are down inside of this tree. And as you can see, this is that large cut and I've got it wired. I wired it here so that I could get this extension to come out more straight, not quite as drastic of an angle coming off of that cut. I wanted to bring it around here. Let's take a look if we can and see if we're getting any progress on that wound. I'm just gonna peel that away if I can. All right, folks, so if you look there, you can see lighter tan right here. That is the new growth. So we are successfully healing this. I am not seeing any significant dieback. So that is a good sign this nice cut is healing well i'm going to get that covered back up with the putty and we are going to make sure that we have recovered that wound so that it can continue that callousing process there this is going to heal quite well i'm not worried about it at all all right so let's get back out here and look at this branch and decide what we're going to do with it all of this growth here is coming from that branch that we just examined and again, it's wired into a nice position. I don't see any wire bite. And we are going to leave these fairly long as we heal that wound. So I'm going to trim just one here off the end. I want to make sure we're stopping that growth. Same here. I'm going to just take one node off the top. Bring that one back to two nodes. This is really strong. I'm only going to give that one node of extension. Let's rotate this tree again. 
prune this back to two nodes here. Let's just pinch that out. We got the additional strength where we're healing here, but this one is back into that nice silhouette. Let's rotate. All right, so this little branch right here is extremely delicate and it is coming off the bottom of one of these branches. It may be a structural flaw, but we can decide that come fall after leaf drop. All of these leaves are quite small. You know, the biggest one is about an inch and a half. Some of these smaller ones are around an inch, much smaller than these other leaves elsewhere on the tree. Let's continue around back up just slightly this branch system right here this is grown really strongly but we also have a large wound at the base of this so let's take a look if we can on camera i'm going to pull the camera in and show you guys in here around the backside where that base of that is that's in there all right so let's come around here and get down underneath the tree so y'all can see what we are working with here Yes, there you see that. This is that gigantic wound. So what we need to do is we need to take a peek at that. I'm gonna peel it back and see the edge. All right, let's see how this is looking here. That is not callousing. That is just the wood of the tree. The good news is I don't see any dieback. So I think we just need to continue giving this time and allowing that to heal. So we're gonna cover that back up. We have no alarm bells going off, but we definitely need to leave this branch strong and allow it to grow. All right, so just to give you one more look, I wanted to isolate all of these branches here. These are all part of that energy system of healing that large cut on that lateral branch slash trunk. We are not gonna reduce any of this branch. We're gonna leave it to grow fully. It doesn't look like it is extending anymore. I don't see any more terminal buds at the end of this branch, but we're not even gonna cut a single leaf off of this. We're gonna let it grow. It's not interfering with any of the other areas of the tree. And so we can easily let this grow freely. All right, so over here we have all of this growth uh, on that large healing wound of that lower branch there. Um, but then over here we have a branch that I saw had some wire on it and it actually could use another slight adjustment. What we're going to do is we're going to bend that branch a little bit further. It's gonna fill this space down here really well, but we do need to move it into a better position. So we're gonna rotate it further around this direction this way so that it can have its own space. We do have this branch here. Again, we're letting this grow because of that healing over there, but I may need to put a small piece of wire on this and get this over there. I don't want these to be competing. So let me just add that small wire. It can be pretty hard to wire these branches. So yep, there we go. One small bend there and we've moved it over into its own space. These are now no longer overlapping. We're gonna bend it just a touch more here. All right, that looks good. We've got our own space and we are going to prune these back. That one there and this one there. So we filled in a new spot here, bend that out just a touch. And then we are going to continue the move here. And I can see we left a little bit of extra wire. That was smart. And let's, I'm gonna get in here and we do want to trim that tip right there and remove as much of that old nub as possible so we have this little extra piece of wire we made sure to wrap that wire around this branch fairly loosely here it's not biting in what we want to do is we're going to use that to persuade just one of these branches of this fork to be a little bit closer so we're reducing that angle we want to have a nice acute angle here and that's going to give that impression of a older branch rather than that youthful wide slingshot shape. By bending this branch over to the left, we've given this other branch a little bit more space so it can continue to photosynthesize. And these stronger branches, we've moved over to the left into their own space. So I am going to trim those back. Looks like we're leaving two nodes there. That looks about right. This little branch here has one, two, three. I am gonna let it have four nodes for now. And that's looking fairly well managed there. All right, let's rotate this a little bit. 
We're just continuing around this tree here. All right, we've got this really long extension on this branch. Let's get down inside of here and see what we're working with. Okay, this is a lower branch. It's coming out of the bottom side of that main leader there. It does have a little bit of work here. You can see the cut putty there. We do have this really nice fine branching ramification down here and we don't want to lose that. What I am gonna do is I am gonna manage it. I don't want it to grow up into the upper branch. So I'm just gonna do a few small prunes there to make sure we're controlling that. When we do our pruning work a little higher in the tree, that should open the light up a little bit for it. Even though these are not shading out the back branches, the tree will no longer need these as much if this is growing strongly. So when we push these back, it does help balance the energy across this entire branch. Push that one back, trim that, slow that down. All right, so now we have a nice small little pad here. Obviously, there's a lot of shading going on, so we're going to figure out what's going on up here. We got this little branch in here, and this is growing downward. And this tree, I am not worried about having to get back, buddy. We're going to pull that out. All that's doing is crowding this area. Prune these back a little bit. That's looking good there. There's no major injuries on this branch. That's looking okay there. Can you see how this is protruding out pretty far from the silhouette? And this is just out of control. This needs to be slowed down. All right, much better there. How's this one looking here? Let's take a look at this branch. Once we dig down in there, we can start to see that structure. We do want to remove these tips. Get those out of there. This one looks good. This tree is growing nice and strong. We're gonna leave that. Those are small. This one, all right, that stronger shoot. We're gonna remove that. Lower branch here. Let's remove that. There we go. That's coming into balance nicely there. All right, that branch is looking nice right here. Nice full branch, good pad. Hard tip here. This branch also is looking fairly strong. Has some really nice ramification in further on the tree. So we are gonna manage this growth. We're balancing strength. We're trying to figure out the structure of this tree. Make sure every branch has a little bit of room in the light. And we can always come back in after this initial pruning round and make additional adjustments so that we can bring the entire tree into balance here. Go, let's bring that back. All right, now we have a nice, well-behaved pad right here. Let's bring that back again. This is super strong growth. No need to let it be excessively strong. So down on the bottom here, it does get a little bit congested. We need to make sure we understand where all these branches are going. If I draw the line, here we go. There's our branch separation. So we've got a little bit of overlap here, and that's okay. We can sort some of this out. And sometimes just pruning back these extensions to one to two nodes naturally clears up some of this congestion. So that's the first step. And as you can see, this kind of opened right back up. This branch down here, it is completely overshadowed by this. All right, so if we look over here, you can see how strong this branch right here is. And it's just sent these enormous leaves on long nodes. I am actually going to chop that back just like that. So we are moving into this next section here. The wounds on this are fairly small. As we look in here, we're going to trim this back and control that growth. These are some really small internodes on this branch right here. So I'm actually gonna leave two internodes since they are so tight. The Twombly's Red Sentinel is a broom style tree, which means it has a propensity to back bud and have multiple shoots coming from each node. So we're gonna probably be in a constant battle with that. Oh, look at this, we've got some seeds here. Got Samaras developing there. If at all possible, I'm gonna save those. Yeah, and that's a fairly short extension. So I'm going to leave those seeds and we can always prune those back later at the end of the growing season. Probably gonna to need to wire this branch down. Oh my goodness, this is really congested. Push that back. Push those back to one node. Beautiful. These 
are all coming from one branch right here. So let's start pruning that back. We've wired this one into position over here. That's nice. Here seems to be the natural progression of that trunk line. As you can see, this node here, this is too long to ever be a useful branch. So that's okay. We know we're gonna eventually trim this back down to here at a minimum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna control this growth and we're gonna start building this apex right here. But this is gonna be removed. This is all just growth to help heal. We're gonna prune away the interior growth so we're not shading this back here. This we're gonna to allow to grow. I'm actually going to also reduce this way back, but we're gonna leave this long extension right here. We're gonna allow that to grow, heal those wounds, and continue to thicken that trunk line. All right, we're looking pretty good right there on that apex. Rotate around a little bit. So here's that front trunk line. We're now gonna move back to this area back here. And that is not its own trunk. That is a major upward growing branch off the central trunk. So we are gonna allow this to develop, but it's only as a branch, it's not as an apex. So we're going to prune all of these back to one internode. Over here, this is the other half of that. We are starting to get some decent ramification here. All right, we will let that grow back here. That's a nice small clump, this one as well. Not too out of hand. This is actually part of that branch, interesting. Let's rotate this around. Make sure you all can see this. We're still working on that main trunk. That is starting to heal pretty well. Get that covered up. We're going to control this growth. Okay. These are nice long internodes. I don't know if we're going to be able to use those, but we will assess that later. This one's a little longer. We're going to do one node. This branch here growing strongly. We'll give these each one node. Wow, that's really long. Interior branch. Bye. All right, so that's all managed there. This one. Well, we're probably not going to keep this node. This is a fairly long node, so this trunk line is going to go here to here. And then we will need a bud down here to continue that. Or we'll go on this back trunk line here. This is a little thicker. This may end up being the primary line here. That's okay. We're going to allow this to continue growing. We have a little, well, you know, that's actually not even that big of a wound back there. So I don't think we have to worry too much about that. That's ironic because it is the largest trunk line. But I still think that we need to develop some dominance of this trunk line. It's, it is the largest, but it's not powerful enough to really dominate this design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue developing these sub apexes here. We're gonna develop an entire canopy here. But while we're doing that, we're going to allow these longer extensions to continue building strength on this tree. There we go. We're starting to get a good vision for it. So. We may end up keeping both of these. We may end up keeping one of them, we're not sure. Okay, so this is our apex here for now. But we're gonna continue growing this extension. We're gonna chop these off. We're gonna get, the, get these out of the shade and we're gonna allow this top to run. Let me pan up so you can see the top there. We trimmed these branches here in the center and we're gonna allow that entire top to grow strong. That gap here is gonna allow sun to get down to this new apex that we're building slowly. This is another one of our trunk lines in here coming through this way, and it has a fairly large wound. I peel the cut putty back a little bit. I can see that it is healing quite nicely. We wanna continue that progress, so we should allow one of these trunks to run. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I am going to prune this back to one, and this extension here, I'm going to allow this to run. This one here, I'm going to remove that. And this we're going to allow to run. But we are going to remove a few of those leaves. We want to open that up so we can get light down in here. But we're going to 
keep the extension long. Same on this back trunk. I am going to, on this back branch, I'm going to remove a few of those leaves and we'll allow those to take up the space in the upper canopy here. So we can start working on healing this wound in here. I am going to check under that cut putty. Oh yeah, that thing is healing super quick. That's going to be probably healed by the end of the summer. That is just amazing. But if we take a look at that lower wound, oh yeah, that has already started to roll. That's amazing. I don't see any dieback on the bottom side of the wound. Usually that would be the weakest point, not on the upper side of the wound. And that crotch would be another really weak point, but it is growing phenomenally. I actually think this is going to take on quite a nice contorted look because of those sharp bends in that branching. So that's just great. Okay, we've got these, this branch coming out of the bottom. This may end up just being a structural flaw that we remove later. For now, I don't want to reduce the density of this tree any farther than we need to. So I'm going to trim those back to one node each, and we will just control the growth there, make sure it stays small and doesn't cause any inverse taper, but still adding possibilities for future branching. All right, so let's rotate around. This was that shorter middle trunk. And this branch is also growing quite well. We're gonna prune that back to one. Prune this one back here as well. We definitely have some bar branches going on here. We have one, two, three, four shoots coming out of that same node there. I don't want to make that decision now. The next lower segment of this branch is fairly thick. We still have time to decide. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to reduce this back to the two weaker exterior shoots. And that could create a continuation of that line. I'm not ready to let go of this upward growing branch. So we're gonna hang on to that for now. Chickens are going crazy in the background here. Sorry, folks. Okay, we can start to see what's going on in here. Spin around. The node down here off screen of this branch, the first node of that is about three plus inches long so i don't even know if this is going to be usable in the final design in any case what we're going to do is we are going to push this back to one to two nodes per shoot make sure it's not extending too far cleaning up some of these tips that we left Great, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do down here in the base. A few potential branches in the bottom, we'll leave those be. All right, so we already know we've got this long branch here that we're allowing to grow. We're gonna clean up each of these extensions to make sure that they're not shadowing the tree too much. Still deciding on where the front of the tree is. I think it's gonna be over here. Let me zoom you all out so you can see what we're doing here. These branches here, we will push these back later on in the season after we've given them a chance to produce energy. They're in their own space, so they're not interfering with any other parts of the tree. We have a few extensions up top to heal wounds here, 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 and here. And we've really done a great job of opening the tree up. The light's gonna be able to penetrate in and keep these smaller areas of ramification strong. Pushing all of that extension growth back is redistributing the energy and allowing the weaker branches and the interior branches to continue to build strength. I am confident that this tree is building an ultra strong root system down here in this training pot. I'm really excited to get back in there and see those roots uh, next year. All of these longer branches that we're leaving to strengthen up the tree or to heal wounds We'll manage those back um, after leaf drop. I generally like to regrow all of my sacrifice branches each year, uh, with exception probably being this one here for that largest trunk that we're trying to increase the caliper. We may allow this to run two full years before we trim it back so that we can get a significant differentiation in the size of the trunks on this tree. I was filming from this side of the tree over here and I realized that the light was glaring on the tree and you probably couldn't see anything. So I wanted to hop back in here and give you all another rotation on this tree so you could see it from all angles. It's coming along quite nicely. Oh, there's a little leaf that dropped there. I just want to make sure that you get a good view of this red sentinel from all sides. <laughs> this thing is heavy, but oh boy, this is a cool tree. And we know it's growing quite strongly. The sacrifice branch is almost a tree of its own here. We've got a few more runners here. So please 
hop into the comments section. Let me know what you think. If you got any ideas of how we can push this tree forward, I'd love to hear them. Oof. I wanted to show you this while we're at the front. This little leaf here, I think you can see that brown spot there. After I did some of that pruning yesterday, I did about half the video yesterday and I came back today. This little leaf got some burn on it because after I trimmed back that overgrowth, these leaves on the interior were still a little bit too delicate to handle that full sun and it got really hot yesterday. So um, don't do what I did, you know, do, do as I say, not as I do. Um, if you do this kind of major cutback work, make sure you protect your maples for, I'd, I'd recommend for at least about a week, uh, making sure that they only get that morning sun and afternoon shade. After about a week of time, these leaves will harden up and they'll be able to tolerate that sunlight a little better. You can get them back into a sunnier location in your garden. No major damage on this tree. One more, one more burned leaf back here. I see maybe three or four across the entire tree. That's not too bad. Uh, but I'll definitely take note for next time and, and try to prevent that in the future. Thanks for joining me on another episode of ACRP Bonsai. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, I'd love to hear what's going on in your Japanese maple garden. Full garden.